It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this special edition of Science Bowl, the second of our two semi-final matches in our middle school competition. Six outstanding young people playing our game today. Let's meet them now. First from Hyattsville Middle School, please say hello to Billy Kennedy, Mahalia Lotz, and Sean Mipagala. And from John Hansen, French Immersion and Montessori Schools, we say hello to Julian Nelson, Everett Richmond, and Hannah Crocheron. And all of our students will be taking home prizes today for having made it to the semifinals. All of them will get Audubon field guides in their choice of insects and spiders, birds, mammals, or reptiles and amphibians. And one of these two teams will go on to play Martin Luther King for this year's middle school championship and will be taking home a trophy for their school and individual trophies for themselves. Now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to the difficulty of the questions with the easier ones worth five and 10 points and the tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds, one of these two fine schools will be our second finalist in this year's middle school competition. We started with 16 schools way back in September. We're down to our final few. Let's go over and make sure everything's working properly. Mahalia, would you try your buzzer for me? Thank you. Good luck to you, to Sean and to Billy. And Everett, would you try yours? Thank you. The green one looks like it's working fine. Good luck to you, to Hannah and to Julian. Are we ready? Yes. Let's do this. Congratulations. You've made it this far in the competition. You are all very special. You're winners no matter what happens today. Let's go alphabetically. H before J, so Hyattsville. Let's start the game. Mahalia. Potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 to start the game. Teams. This is very strange, but they've discovered that if a person has a hookworm or some other kind of parasite, they don't suffer the kind of hypersensitivity to environmental things like pollen that cause these. Everett. Allergies. Allergies, yes. So if you have a parasite, you don't get an allergy. It's kind of a high price to pay to stave off hay fever, but they find that somehow it changes the immune system. Go green. Dayline science for 25. Dateline for 25, the big one in that category, teams, is as follows. This 39th President of the United States who won the Nobel Peace Prize did so in part because he helped wipe out river blindness in portions of West Africa. Name him for 25 points. Jimmy Carter. Hi, it's Bill. Jimmy Carter? It is indeed Jimmy Carter, yes, for all of that work in the Carter Center down in Atlanta, helping to provide villagers with filters so they could filter out those parasites before they would drink it or cook with it. Go, red. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, be very careful if you pile up soaked linseed oil rags in your basement because they can burst into... Flames. Give me more. Spontaneous combustion. That's what I want to hear. Absolutely. Thank you, Julian. That was this what I wanted to hear. It is known as spontaneous combustion. Go green. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical 10 points. Teams, tritium is the radioactive form, the isotopic form, of this chemical element that is number one on the periodic table. Number one, Mahalia. Hydrogen. Hydrogen, yes, atomic number one. Tritium, good, go. Red. Body systems for 15. Body systems, 15 points. Seems your question is as follows. Multiple choice question. Teams, tennis player Serena Williams recently suffered from a pulmonary embolism. Did she have a lesion in her brain, a hole in her heart, or a clot in her lungs? Hi, it's Phil. A 
clot in her lungs? Absolutely right. Yes, and it took her out of competition. I don't know that she's returned as yet. All right, with that, Heightsville 100 points. Hanson right behind at 80. Advantage red. Super 8 for 15. Super 8, 15 points. Teams, because one of the symptoms of this disease is a fear of water, it is sometimes called hyd... Rabies. It is rabies, yes. Hydrophobia, rabies caused by a bite of an infected skunk or fox or dog or bat, some other animal. Absolutely. Good playing there. Go red. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, there is a kind of jellyfish that lives in an isolated lake in the South Pacific where there is no food. So they have trapped algae inside their tentacles. Everett? Photosynthesis. Not photosynthesis. Good. Oh, I wish I could give that to you. Hyattsville, the algae trapped inside the tentacles of these jellyfish do perform photosynthesis, thereby giving food to the jellyfish. The jellyfish provide protection for the algae. It's a happy family. What's that known as? Symbiosis. It is symbiosis. Yes, it is. Good. Go. Red. Dateline for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, our governor, Martin O'Malley, has something in common with Cervantes' Don Quixote because he wants to build these structures out Hyattsville. Windmills. Windmills. Windmills, yes. He wants to build them off the coast of an ocean city that will generate cheap electricity for those of us here in the state. All right. Go red. Dateline for 10. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, doctors now know that when you're very young, the cardiomyocytes can, if need be, help to cure a broken what? John Hansen. Bone? Not bone, no. The cardiomyocytes that are found in babies when they're just a few months old can help to cure, if needed, a broken what? Heart. Heart, yes. When you're very young, you still have some regenerative powers there. Cardio was your clue there. Go red. Popery for 10. Popery for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Hemorrhoids, arthritis, migraines, gout. At one time, all these things were thought to be caused by this literary activity that we now know is Hyattsville. Reading. Reading. Reading, yes. Reading is fundamental. People thought all kinds of strange things, weakening eyes, all kinds of things. We know those not to be true. Go red. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, if you get a fecal transplant, hmm, John Hansen. Poop. You got poop. That's right. They're putting poop in your body so you get some good bugs inside you. Absolutely right. You're back in the game. Go green. Zupre for 25. Zupre 25. Big one in that category, teams, is as follows. You know, because they live in land and on water, uh, crocodiles and... Hmm. Amphibious. Yes, that's true, but I can't give you the points. I'll repeat the question for Hyattsville. Because they live on land and water, crocodiles and beavers and seals sometimes are called amphibians, even though they're not true amphibians. They're not true amphibians because unlike toads and frogs and newts and salamanders, because they don't have porous skin, they can't do what? Breathe. Breathe underwater? Breathe underwater. That's exactly what I want to hear for 25 points. And with that, we come to the end of the first round. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back. Nice to have you here on Science Bowl for the second of our two semifinal matches. The first was won by Martin Luther King, and today's winner will play against them for this year's middle school championship in this, our 25th year here on Science Bowl on channels 96 and 38. Nice to have you with us. Let's look at that score right now. It's Hyattsville 190, John Hansen 90. Hyattsville, let's go first to you. You're in the lead, and you know, you are the second winningest school in Science Bowl history in terms of the middle schools. Only Kenmore has you beat, and it looks like you're on the way maybe to another championship. Not if John Hansen has anything to say about it, though. Mahalia, tell us about your school. Who's your principal? Dr. Susie Long is our principal. Yes, and she's new this year, is she not? Yes. Yes, and the sponsor, you have two sponsors, do you not? Ms. Hafez is our main sponsor, yes. and Mr. Knights also helps out. Wonderful, and we hope that they'll be able to join us on set, and we appreciate all the work that they've done to get you ready. Mahalia, you've been on Science Bowl before. Yes. Nice to have you back. Billy's been here before, and a lot of veterans, and certainly that experience helps. Tell me, were there any alternates on your team? Yeah. Today, um, outside the studio, we have Megan Dominey, and we also have Brittany. That's yeah, wonderful. And I know your brother plays in Science Bowl as well yeah. in the elementary division, so it's a family affair here. Nice to have you on our show. Tell us about yourself. What do you want to do when you get older? Um, there are so many options out there. 
Um, aren't there? That's the truth. Maybe something that combines science or math with art. Oh, that, that's, that's very interesting. I like that. And in your spare time, what do you do? I love to read novels and sing in choirs. Great. All right. Uh, musically inclined young lady. Billy, nice to have you here. I know you told me before you'd like to work in some science-oriented field, maybe with NASA or even the CIA. Uh, so you love science. Yep. I can tell. Yeah, you've been a great young man. I like, nice to see you grow up here on camera. Tell me what you do in your spare time. Um, I like to read, especially science fiction, and I like to play video games. Video games, very good. All right, well, keep up your good playing. And Sean, uh, you are very musically inclined. You play the viola, do you not? I do. And the guitar? Yes. And the piano? Yep. And anything else? Well, I do play. I'm. I do play a violin, but I'm not as good as that as in the viola. I see. I characterized him as a one-man band before. So many musical instruments. So you practice a lot. You study. You got it all going on. What else do you do in your spare time if you have any? I like to read, watch, well, play video games. I go on a soccer team. That's great. So it's good to get some exercise as well out there. And uh, you're all playing very well. You keep it up. John Hansen, you've never made it this far in our competition. It's great to have you here in the semifinals. Everett, what are you doing right down there, John Hansen, that got you this far? Um, I was just really interested in science. And, and it I shows. It really does show. And this is a two-part school, part French immersion, and a separate Montessori division, correct? And you and Julian are part of the Montessori, Montessori and H Hannah is part of the French immersion. So uh, two schools are better than one in some ways. It's like two heads are better than one, so you're both bringing different talents to this game. Everett, do you have any alternates on your team? Yes, we have Rochelle, Katie, Samara, and Deja. That's great. And who's the principal down there? You have two principals, don't you? Yes. On the Montessori side, we have Ms. Chappelle, and on the French side, we have Dr. Asama. That's great. Thanks for sharing that with us. What do you like best about uh, your school, Everett? Um, I just feel like Montessori has just got me where I am today, and I don't think I would be able to survive in any other school. Wow, because it's a, a certain kind of instruction, and you're used to that, and it's been successful for you. So uh, what a nice thing to say, a nice tribute to your school and your teachers. Julian, uh, do you share Everett's feelings about your school? Oh, yes, I love my school. Yeah? Um, and I know you, you like to read, you're an academician, but you also play football, and you do shot put. Yes. Right there at John Hansen. No, oh, no. Um, I play football and I do shot put for um, outside organizations. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't think middle schools had football teams or track teams as yet, but uh, that's great. What do you want to do when you get older? Um, I want to be a physicist. Yeah, you told me that last time. How'd you get interested in physics? Well, I remember it as when our teacher, Ms. Morales, science teacher, gave us our physics books. I was just looking through it and reading all the different things about physics, and it seemed interesting to me. Yeah. Sometimes that's what it takes. It takes a, an influential teacher and a certain book, and it just sparks interest and can turn into a career. Good luck with that. Nice to have you back. Hannah, nice to see you for the first time. You were an alternate before. Now you're on set. What do you like about this game? Um, I just like all the questions and answering, finding out, even if I didn't know the, the answer to the question, finding out the answer. Well, all your answers have been good thus far, and even when these questions are wrong, you're, you're in the right ballpark, so you're all thinking just the right way, and that's what we expected at this level of competition here. What do you want to do someday, Hannah? I want to be a forensic scientist. Yes, a forensic scientist, and I know you dance and you sing also in your spare time, don't you? Nice to have you here. All right, let's get back to the game. Hanson, 90. Hyesville, 190. Lots of points to give away, and Mahalia would just start us out. Um, Super 8 for 10. Soup prayed for 10 points. Teams, the world is mourning because this cuddly little white ursine Canute died recently. Who was he? Who was he, Hyesville? A polar bear. A polar bear? He was a little polar bear, the one that his mother abandoned and the zoo in Germany took it over. It was more popular than the panda, but at four years of age, they found it last week it had died of a seizure at only four years of age. So everyone was very upset about that. Go red. Green things for 10. Green things, 10 points. Teams, <laughs> if a bird gets its nectar from the bottom of the flower and doesn't go in from the top, it cheats the flower out of what process? Hi, it's Phil. Pollination. pollination? Yeah, pollination. The whole point of going in is to get some pollen dusted on your beak and your feathers so you can transfer it to the next one. If you go in underneath, that's not playing fair. That's a free lunch. Go red. Dateline for five. Dateline for five points. Teams for $200,000, Virgin Galactic Spaceship in a few years will take you 62 miles straight up 
right where the Earth's atmosphere ends, it will take you into what? Into whatever it... The outer space. Outer space, the great beyond, the final frontier. And you'll get four minutes of weightlessness. So if you got to spare $200,000, go, go ahead, knock yourself out. Go green. Um, Zoo Parade for 20. Zoo Parade for 20 points, teams. Sometimes lionesses, before they go out on a hunt, can be seen rolling around in zebra dung. Hi, it's Ville. It disguises their scent from the prey? Yes, absolutely. It's a kind of chemical camouflage so that the zebra don't smell the lion coming. Yes, go red. Green things for five? Green things for five points. Teams, just as anything other than email is sometimes called snail mail, a lot of people today get their news on the internet, but if you want it printed on a page, it's said to be printed on these dead green things. Hi, it's Bill. Trees. What you think? Trees. Dead trees, the dead tree edition. Absolutely right. That's what newsprint is sometimes derisively called today. Go red. Super eight for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, one of the most popular children's books in the country right now, it's on the bestseller list, is about an elephant that injures its proboscis. The title of the book, Mahalia. Trunk? Trunk? A trunk? Yes, I broke my trunk. I broke my trunk is the name of the book. Okay, go. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, what Disney character's proboscis kept getting longer as it told lies? Everett? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. That's it. Go. Green. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25. The big one in that category, teams, is as follows. Iodine-131 and cesium-137 are forms of those chemical elements that are radioactive because they have additional neutrons with them. John Hansen. Isotopes. You got that right. I was going to say, what I initial term do we use? It is an isotope. Got gotcha. you. 25 needed points. Go. Green. Body systems. Body systems for 20. Body systems, 20 points. Team, the question is as follows. Many Japanese are buying as much salt as they can because they know it will stave off radiation poisoning that could affect this endocrine gland located in your... Mahalia. Thyroid. I'll pass this to Sean. Sean? The thyroid. You got that right. The thyroid, the endocrine gland in your neck that is particularly sensitive to radioactivity. Yes, sir. Thank you. Go. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points, teams. The units for rating light bulbs sounds like a question. What are they? Watts. Watts? Watts? Absolutely. Good. Go. Science potpourri for 25. Potpourri 25. Big one in that category, teams. Listen carefully. I want you to look at the monitor, please, in the studio for this question. Teams, there are thermometers that you put under your tongue. Thermometers, yes, sir? What's that? Put it in your ear. You don't put it in your ear. Some thermometers you can put under your tongue, some you can put into your rectum, some under your armpit. This is the exergen temporal artery thermometer that is very accurate. Where on the body is it placed? Uh, pass this to Sean. Sean? The area of veins and blood vessels and the circulatory system. Area. You have to be specific. Where? Um, by the heart. No, on your temple, the temporal artery right up here. You put it right on the forehead. This is the temporal lobe of the brain and the temple. Try again, please. Green. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, this loss of feeling that is brought on during surgery by chemicals isn't really sleep. Mahalia. Unconsciousness. Uh, pass this to Billy. Billy. Unconsciousness. Not unconsciousness. John Hansen for 25 points, this loss of sensitivity that's brought on in surgery, oftentimes by chemicals, isn't really sleep, it's kind of a reversible coma. What do we call that? Um, numbness. Good try. Anesthesia. Anesthesia, as in an anesthesiologist. All right, good try both teams. No points though, go again green. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, all across the world, the tops of mountains are bare of trees because there's too much sun and wind and rocks and avalanches. This demarcation area is known as what line? What line, Hyattsville? Timber line. No, no, it's tree line. Um, timber line? The timber line. That's what I want to hear. Good, go. Um, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points, teams. 
Lady Gaga went all oviparous recently because she arrived in and hatched from one of these at the Grammys. An egg? An egg, yeah. Good. Red. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical. 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. It's a numerical answer. The Richter scale that measures the strength of earthquakes is open-ended, and yet in all of its history, it has never... John Hanson. Never reached 10.0? Never reached 10 Absolutely right. It has never reached 10.0. Good. Go. Science potpourri for 20. Science potpourri for 20 points, teams. What kind of scientist put the wrong head on the fossil of the Apatosaurus dinosaur? John Paleontologist. Hansen. Again? Paleontologist. You got it. Paleontologist it is. Good. Yes, sir. Green things for 25. Green things for 25. Big one in that category, teams. Look at the monitor. Excuse me. For 25 points. Yes. Look at the monitor, if you would. All right. What do you want to tell us, Everett? Pineapples. It's not a pineapple. It's a good try, though. I, I like your gutsiness. This is an agave plant, Hyattsville. It is now being considered as a source of biofuels. It's spiky, and it is very sharp. I'm going to give you three characteristics of this, of this plant. I'll give you 25 points if you can tell me what either any two of them stand for. An agave plant is a monocot, it's a perennial, and it's a succulent. Two out of three. What do those things mean? Um, perennial means it comes back every year. Correct. And passes to Sean. Well, when a monocot doesn't like, it doesn't form flowers. No, it does form flowers. A monocot, as opposed to a dicot, has one seed leaf and a succulent. I mean, it's juicy. It's got very like a cactus. It's got very moist stems and leaves. No points. We have one question left. That is Dateline for twenty. This will be it. This will be the end of our game. Teams, those people who shine lasers at airplane cockpits, that's illegal, can blind pilots because it's a multiple choice. The very darkest part of the retina is very sensitive to laser light. Is it called Hyattsville? The pupil? The pupil? Not the pupil. The very darkest, darkest part of the eye, which is back on the retina, John Hansen, is it the fovea, the frenulum, or the follicle, the place that absorbs this laser light and can cause blindness? The second one? The, um, I said fovea, frenulum, and follicle. Frenulum. It's actually the fovea is what we're looking for. And with that, we've come to the end of our game, and it looks like Hyattsville has prevailed. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't you go away. And welcome back. We hope you enjoyed this science bowl game at home as much as we did here in the studio. It wasn't just the six super scholars that played our game so well, but look at the shadow teams that were here. Look at all of the talent and not just the young people, but the adults. Our final tally today is John Hansen, 170, Hyattsville, 285. Congratulations to Billy and Mahalia and Sean. Miss Hafez, thank you so much for being here. And Brittany and standing behind Brittany back there is Megan. Thank you for being part of this wonderful team. We will see you in the finals against Martin Luther King. Let's see some smiles over here. You guys were awesome today. Hannah and Everett, I loved how you played the game. Julian, you knew everything today. Thanks for being part of this team. And look at all of the talent back there. Say hello to all of the alternates at John Hanson, Samira and uh, Julian, Julian and Brittany and Andrew. And who did I miss, Katie? And Deja, right? Mr. Diara and Ms. Morales, thank you for being part of our game. We thank you. We hope to see you in the finals. It's Martin Luther King versus Highsville. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.